à Jonas Neufonen, Finlandie, pour le film Reindeer Spotting, Escape from Santaland. The motivation, uh, it was a very difficult uh, decision we had to make and the jury was not uh, happy, all of us, so, but uh, the way the film portrays uh, the world of drugs from the inside gives a new dimension of the social problem and will open a necessary discussion of our society. Possibly for the first time in cinema reflects a slice of life on the other side. Um, the jury was strongly divided on aesthetic and moral issues of the film, but we thought it's an important thing. Wow, what a surprise. <laughs> Thank you so much for the jury, for, uh, for the audience who attended to the screenings. And my mom, my dad, and my drug dealer. So, uh, <laughs>
Yeah. That's, a, that's like a huge audience. So they were losing money because they people yeah. could not go there. People age of 15 to 18 could not see the film. So it, it was like, uh, from their point of view, it was like uh, they're, they're losing money. It's like a it's com com con 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 com commercial thing, but uh, at the same, but they turned it around and said like this is an educational film yeah. that you should not take drugs, and that kind of pisses us off because we yeah. wanted to make an individual story. We didn't want it to be so much about. I mean, like at least, at least we didn't want it, want to make a movie that says like, look at these guys. This yeah. is where you end up if you take drugs, because it's only dealing about the people like uh, like people who has drug problem and that's completely different thing than people who are using drugs and don't have drug problem we also so, oh yeah so yeah so like um so it i mean it the movie really don't tell anything about drugs in general it tells about like a personal problems if, uh, of individual that and that you cannot escape from them wherever you go they're gonna exist they're gonna follow you because and after all it's it's a hard and long time process to change yourself if the need comes from inside so uh, so I I, I, didn't, I really hated when they made it uh, and they were trying to make make it as an educational tool that just say no don't take drugs and and all that bullshit because it's well when I've seen it yeah I I, uh, I didn't get this I mean yeah there's no uh, positive uh, uh, attitude uh, towards drugs there's yeah. nothing against I mean it's a personal story that's oh, the, yeah. the way to, to see it there's no other way so I think uh, the censorship work in an, uh, at another level probably yeah which surprised me because it's very yeah yeah, I th I think because you know this, it's such a top you sub subject in Finland like uh, the drugs. I mean, sixties never happened in Finland. Like it went straight to the left wing uh, kind of marching and pro Soviet Union kind of thing, organized thing that was run from from uh, from uh, Moscow. Uh, so it, I mean like the hippie thing never happened in Finland so and the, so the drugs are they've always seen really bad I mean any, any drug any drug and any drug user is seen in really bad light in really negative light so I wanted to make like uh, like an individual like the show uh, show the drug user as human as human way of, as possible like with all the uh, uh, different angles different like um, what would you say like different uh, like not only the good sides or the bad sides but as a more tri uh, three-dimensional human being yeah. yeah which is the difficult yeah. path for a, yeah. for a film I mean and you succeeded yeah. But uh, I I heard that you filmed for more than five years this film. Really? Took you more than five years. Oh yeah, film. well actually the some well, poses. Uh, the shooting process was really, really. It was totally the easiest part of this film because I just had my camera and I was part of the group of of the people and I was getting high myself and just filming like this. You know, like I was just going on like this for months and months on. But it's, and it's, I mean, 90% of the film is shot within six months period. But then when there was no really, a, like a construct, a, a story behind, like planned story, things just happened. And then nothing was planned. And it went, I mean, like in some days when I was high on speed, I thought like, okay, we make this like five, minute uh, TV series or something like that. I mean like YouTube film clip mm -hmm. and the other day I was thinking like well are we gonna make a long series with different characters and TV and so the reality is 
and the outcome of the thing changed a lot during the process but anyways like so basically I shot and shot and shot and shot and shot a lot of footage and then we started looking through the footage with him like and there was like hundreds of hours of uh, we looked it through and thought like what kind of movie we can make out of this and then it came clear that okay it's gonna be a documentary film of this and this kind but it was still like a like a puzzle without not enough pieces or pieces not the right pieces puzzles and you yeah. wonder which puzzle would be the right one to make yeah maybe. and then then you have to so it took a long time and it was also like we didn't have any funding from any so it, uh, from anywhere actually the uh, uh, the organization we started to work with at the beginning where we got the like when where I got the cameras they took the cameras away when they saw the footage and said like you cannot show this kind of thing it's yeah it's like uh, this is and also the the police confiscated some of the tapes you know like and doing like okay you're filming this kind of crap and, sh and destroy the tapes and then thought maybe the camera is stolen taking it out for a couple okay. of days and you know so so there was many 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 problems during the during the the whole thing because it's it's not like it was like micro level of like really micro level of filmmaking and how are you gonna get financing when you uh, tell that you know oh, I got this idea of yeah, they, making this film and you got no education uh, real education for that and you got no like um, credibility of you know like that you're gonna deliver a real film you're not a professional and the financing system is based so much on being professional and having an education and and now actually I think after this movie they're changing the structures of they so they could make the financing possible for like smaller projects okay. for which and is I, which is good and and this film was a commercial success in finland right yeah it was really like uh, a groundbreaking success and to be how honest, the yeah. public react to it or the, the well i i think we got like so many different kinds yeah. of um Reactions. I never saw it. In, I did, I saw it first time, like ready-made here in Locarno, uh -huh. the whole film. Because what I did is, like, we edited till the last point till we had to release it. And after that, you know, working for so many years with the project, you kind of like, there's nothing I can do anymore. I don't want to even see it. I just let it. I I just want to read how people are kind of taking it and. So many people thought it's like, like um, anti-truck propaganda. Like this is no, not propaganda, but like a statement against drugs. Like, look at these guys. Uh, look what condition they are in, and don't take drugs. Just say no, and all kinds of organizations that uh, of of like. A, of uh, this sort, like just say no to drugs and you know what, whatever you call it. Problem them. is, uh, people this don't see this uh, through this uh, kind of a propaganda wall they have built around this subject, and they just uh, want to see what is uh, part of the politically correct reality of these uh, organizations. Yeah. This in a production company tried to get us involved with this uh, anti-drug use organization. And we really had to be strict about uh, not getting involved in them. Yeah. yeah. I think what influenced to the film was the 90s, like this, um, also like the uh, the 90s, like funny drug movies where people take drugs. It's 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 seen like it's like a comedy kind of things. So it's 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 showing a little bit that side but it also shows the reality of and of the world of drug addict which is not 
I mean, there's many funny scenes probably in the film, you know, like, and we. Yeah, but that. But then again, it's you know, like it's not definitely not a comedy, not definitely. Yeah, it's, uh, it's oh comedy. maybe it's a, yeah. I think comedy, it's yeah. a, it's kind of a dark comedy. It, yeah. it could be like at least there could be elements of dark yeah, yeah, sure. comedy comedy, but like so it 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 came again. It's also against these like uh, films that are showing drug uses like really light like a uh, funny way in the like a 90s and glorifying the the drug use and the gang kind of like a gangster behavior kind of thing and what was the reaction i i mean probably it started very naturally but uh mm. by the the guys that appear in the film like uh Ian? nobody would no no one of us expected it to become so huge like in what it became in Finland but um, but yeah they were uh, basically they they've all seen it seen the film afterwards like sober and they've seen it many times and they all say they're happy with the film all the guys who were in it and it's like you know when you and I, 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 I really appreciate I'm, I mean like some many of the guys how m uh, good sense of humor they have even things dealing with themselves when they're really fucked up and saying maybe stupid things and that's something to admire how they can be so so proud I mean so um, so um, uh, pr so with the good co confident, yeah, with yeah, good self-confidence, not to be ashamed of, and just get, get, when you can laugh at yourself, you know, it's it's, it's the best thing. Yeah, do it's it's the best thing you can do, definitely. Yeah, and I, uh, yeah, that's what I'm. Uh, I've been really amazed with the the reactions of the movie, and they really. Uh, most of the guys they've been really happy there's a couple of girls who didn't like because they've changed so much their lifestyle uh, like working as an accountant or working in some like proper professions and having children and and uh, and they didn't want to be seen so we had to blur their faces and leave them out edit them out on the documentary so they but you know, like what? I was curious about this because when I saw the film, I said, "Okay, this is a very different life. You're separated. You're lonely, may, uh, m most of the time in the film, uh, at least." But then Ian dreams of a uh, very conventional dreams, like yeah, that's uh, a house, the garden, a wife, not yeah. not too much money because it's uh, pointless, but yeah. very conventional dream. Which is very opposite to to his actual life. But this yeah. dream also makes him a little bit paria in his own uh, circle. Yanni is also alone in uh, in a sense in his uh, own. Uh, that's why he wants to get away even from his own kind. He is also a paria in here because he has this dream in a way to get something better. Of yeah, course, like realize. Reaching, yeah, reaching out because and it's also like that circle doesn't. Uh, offer him what he need, what he dreams what he needs from in his life this one character that the guy who is taking the uh sh syringes and needles out of the uh out of the um trash, trash can or yeah, yeah. trash yeah and i think he his role in the movie his cinematic role is to show he's kind of a survival of that culture who can make his way out that way but Yanni is a kind of guy who cannot, he, he's, he don't have future, so to say, in, in that culture. He cannot survive in that culture. He wants to change. And this guy is like uh, the opposite of him. He, it's, uh, maybe his character will, will show that, you know, like he, he's more stronger, you know, he can, he can handle this kind of harsh drug users, like drug not drug users, drug addicts life. So, yeah.
<coughs> you got the Premio de la Critica one hour ago. This yeah. is going to change the um, reactions in Finland, according to you, the reaction to the film from the government, from the yeah. film commission. Yeah. We'd hope so, but uh, realistically speaking, I don't, I don't know any, I don't think anything is going to really change. But they, maybe the journalists. Yeah, because uh, I, I felt that you were all concerned about not being considered as, uh, not being uh, the film considered like a piece of cinema. Yeah, exactly. That was your main concern. Right? Oh yeah, that that's I mean like this is the first uh, occasion like uh, there was good ratings in uh, by the critics in Finland for the film and there was like a uh, lot of viewers, so many people went to see the film, but still I. S The many people sensed that this is kind of uh, this is all to do with the topic, you know, and it's it could be like such a social pornography that has never been made before, such an exposure of so, so this uh, and just because it's from Finland and it's made for them, it makes it interesting. But may, maybe after this festival, they acknowledge it a little more like as a film because the because we've made like a lot of work like we've been working years and years to make Five it like really years. like make it a, a best possible movie out of that footage about the editing which was a great part of the work uh, for this film how did you work on it The method was try to get into a, maybe a, um, a not so conscious uh, decision maker when I do the editing. I try to find this kind of a trance state where I just can feel the flow of the image. And usually it involves, at this uh, project it involved uh, doing the drugs they are doing in this film and uh, trying to find this same kind of um, level of consciousness so maybe it can be also transported through the film to the audience but of course uh, it would be hypocritical to be uh, sober and straight while working on this kind of a project if you are want to truly express uh, what the material is uh, giving yeah, we wanted to everybody to we wanted to kind of uh, break the myth of this um, injecting injecting drugs so we wanted everybody in the uh, in in the work working group to try one one shot because it's always like in cinema and in, in like uh, people's minds it's like when you do one shot that's the that fucks up your life forever and you know so and that's not I, and it's it's a huge myth that is yeah. even re repeated by the people who inject drugs because it Uh, and who are addicted to that, like, because it re uh, kind of relieves them from responsibility as well. So we wanted everybody to try one fix, and so we did. Yeah, like too. everybody in the working group, like the editing assistant and yeah. the editor, and, uh, I did and maybe a bit more with the editing. Yeah, <laughs> like but the uh, producers, they the producers, they didn't yeah. go for it. <laughs> so our plan was like to. Like spike his drink. Spike his drink, drink with the drugs when he was having this uh, <laughs> this um, cocktail party with the Finnish ambassador. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we wanted to uh, put some uh, some subtex in his drink, just to make him a little. <laughs> But it never happened because you know they, they, they yeah, yeah, he got away. Yeah, the ambassador he was avoid avoiding us yeah. like a like a like cancer, a you know, yeah. like a plague, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he he was like yeah, he shake your hand. Oh my then god, really? They, you know, they and yeah, you know, they didn't really. I, I, like even with the. Okay, you were involved uh, in the project since the first. Uh, The beginning. Well, the beginning was with him, with his uh, friends at Rovaniemi, during this six months shooting I wasn't uh, involved with. We had met before, uh, just by chance, by a mutual friend, but really I became involved uh,
couple of years later when he was looking for uh, basically uh, he had this uh, huge pile of material and lo just uh, starting to look to get to, to put it together and he had uh, scheduled he ha was going abroad to India for uh, one and a half years and basically what we started was uh, we worked together a couple of months to start the project and then I stayed back in Finland to edit the first versions then I went to India so uh, he could say what he thinks of the work I've done and pieces of the this huge puzzle I had assembled and which pieces would work maybe which wouldn't then we started to refine this uh, process do it again start over uh, we maybe had uh, probably 30 or 40 versions it's hard to say different uh, and uh, different storylines different uh, characters some characters were una we were unable to get into the film so we had to change them and, but all in all, it took uh, more than five years to get it from this uh, raw state into the... to find this story, what is the actual, the tr actual story behind all this.